It is my distinct honor to welcome our MC, our Toastmaster for the Evaluation Contest. Let's give her a round of applause, Cassandra Lee. a dignitary, whether current or past. And what I mean by what I mean by dignitary is if you are an international director, current or past, a district governor, a lieutenant governor of education and training, lieutenant governor of marketing, a division governor or an area governor, any of those roles, can you please stand at this time? We wanted to make certain that we gave you recognition for all the work that you've done and all the work that you are currently doing. At this time, I would like to inform you that all contestants and functionaries have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmasters International rules that govern this contest. Once the contest has begun, the Sergeant at Arms will secure the doors. So everyone take a look at the doors. You might see some people in fatigue. You're not going too much in the <laughs> Members of the audience, this is really important for you. We ask that you, as members of the audience, please refrain from leaving or entering the room once the contest has begun. No one should enter the room or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so, however, if time permits, during the minute of silence between the presentations. After the contest, please do not leave the room until it is determined that all ballots have been counted. And I think that's so important, I'm going to say that one more time. Once the contest has ended, please do not leave the room until it has been determined that all of the ballots have been counted. Agreed upon? Yes. Thank you. With that said, let the contest begin. Yeah. I know on all of your tables you have before you an agenda for the evaluation contest. At this time, what I would like to do is to give you the speaking order. I will give the speaking order for the speech evaluation contestants at this time for all six of them. And contestant number one will be Dave Robertson. Contestant number one, Dave Roberson. Contestant number two, Tim Wilson. Contestant number two, Tim Wilson. Contestant number three, Dan Dane. Contestant number three, Dan Dane. Contestant number four, Tony Lawler. Contestant number four, Tommy Lawler. Contestant number five, Sarah Schiffer. Contestant number five, Sarah Schiffer. Contestant number six, Barry B. Mixon. Contestant number six, Barry B. Mixon. That is the speaking order for our contest. And in order for a contest to actually happen, in order for our evaluation contestants to actually compete, we need to have someone speak for them. At this time, I would like for you to please help me welcome to the podium Rachel Clark with Information Overload. Information Overload, Rachel Clark. Thank you. 
Let's see a quick show of hands of how many people have already visited one of these websites today. <laughs> That's what I thought. Now, had I said any of those words 10 years ago, it would have meant absolutely nothing. But, but now these, web, these words that started off as websites have now become verbs in the English language. Yeah, now you can YouTube it, Facebook it, and tweet it. <laughs> Each of these sites have changed the way that we communicate. It has changed technology for us and the way that we are entertained. But the problem is, our society used to function off of the barter system. You know, I needed you for food, maybe I made your clothes for you. And I think that caused us to have a general appreciation for one another. So no, I'm not here to bash technology. Anybody who's ever got into a debate with me knows the first thing I would do is pull out my smartphone and try to find something on Google that'll prove me right. <laughs> but what I want to suggest today are ways that we can embrace technology without losing that connection between one another. How many times have you been in the middle of a conversation <laughs> and had somebody do that to you? <laughs> Better question, how many times have you been in the middle of a conversation and done that for someone else? <laughs> I won't make you raise your hand on that. So here's my suggestion. Whatever you're doing, give that your full attention. When you're at work, give all your attention to your work. And that way, when you go home, you won't have to, you'll have time to, 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 pay, to pay full attention to your family. And if you pay full attention to your family while you're at home, they probably won't have to email and text you all day while you're at home. <laughs> Think about it. I have another question for you. How many searches do you think take place on Google every single day? Come on, shout it out.
Give your full attention to whatever you're doing at the time. Secondly, use fun research as a way to connect and network with one another. And lastly, post your intimate and special moments on Facebook after you've given your family and friends a call or going in person to tell them already. Albert Einstein said, it has become appallingly obvious that technology exceeds humanity. Albert Einstein was only alive from 1879 to 1955. The biggest advancement in technology he saw was the creation of the air conditioner. <laughs> so think about what he might say about us today. As Rachel walked off the stage, I had to go over and shake her hand, not just only to congratulate her for completing and being a target speaker for the speech, but to remind me to tell my family those intimate moments before posting them on Facebook. So once again, let's thank Rachel and Clark for being here. It is time that we give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluation. Sergeant at Arms, will you do us the privilege of escorting our contestants out of the room for five minutes and begin timing them once they are seated in the location for them to prepare their notes? Thank you, Sergeant at Arms. Timers, can I ask a favor of you as well? Can you time for us once our contestants are out of the room and begin timing five minutes in here as well? Thank you. <coughs> it looks as if our sergeant at arms and his team have uh, escorted our contestants out of the room and while the evaluation contestants are completing their evaluations, what we will do at this point is get to know our target speaker much better. So everyone, please help me welcome back to the podium, Rachel Clark. So, Rachel, Rachel. I said her name just to make sure the microphone was on. You guys heard me, Greg. Good, good. Rachel, I want to find out from you a couple of different things. This is our opportunity to get to know you. We've heard your speech. You've done an awesome job of presenting your speech. And at this time, we want to know how long have you been in Toastmasters? I've been in Toastmasters a little bit over a year. I joined in uh, August or September of 2010. Okay, so August or September of 2010. Can you tell us what club you're representing? representing the DePaul leaders. And speaking of DePaul, Rachel, I see here in your bio that you currently are serving as the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations over at DePaul University. Well, tell me about that position. Give me some feedback. How long have you been doing that role? Well, I've also been with DePaul a little bit over a year. That's Kind of out, out, ended up in this particular Toastmasters club because it's very convenient <laughs> right on campus. Uh, so I've been there a little bit over a year, and specifically what I do is provide career services to DePaul's alumni, and we also plan uh, service projects for the alumni to participate in every quarter. So if there are any alumni in the audience, you can talk to me. <laughs> tell by the applause that either those that were applauding for you were your fellow Toastmaster members or they actually are from DePaul University. And you know, it's something that I found really interesting with you being the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations is that it's a 
unique job. Not that many people would hear do that role. And tell me, if you can, and all of us, if you will, what do you enjoy most about working with the alumni from DePaul University? I just really love being on the, the college atmosphere and the college campus. And in addition to that, um, it's a position where you actually get to help people. Um, a lot of my, a lot of people that I connect with, they are out of work and have never had to look or haven't had to really look in the last 10 or 15 years and uh, I know that our services make a difference for them so I, I just like doing things that actually feel like I'm helping someone or making a difference for them. Oh. Good, good, good. Love helping making a difference. I know I've heard people say that in relation to working with undergrads or the graduates. So it's so good to hear you say that with working with the alumni. Rachel, you still have some interesting things on your bio. I have another question for you. Are you okay with that? Okay with that. All right. I see here that you have an interest that is listed as relationship and physical health. What exactly does that mean? Can you give us a little bit more feedback on that? Um, well, anybody who knows me also knows that I'm always counting calories or looking at different workouts and things like that to do. So I just have a big interest in health and nutrition. And I'm the same way uh, with relationships, everything from family relationships to uh, mentor relationships. I'm always reading books on those kind of things. So it's just the interest that I have. Okay, so are you making your relationships count calories too? <laughs> so I'm working on it here, so he'll probably answer yes. <laughs> Good, thanks for that explanation for me. I thought that was really interesting, and I wasn't quite certain how the relationship was between those two, and I appreciate you sharing that feedback about who you are. We got some more insight about your character. And you know, Rachel, there's one other question that I want to ask of you because I find it very interesting. You said that you've been at DePaul University for a little over a year. The position you have right now, you've been in a little over a year. You've been in the club a little over a year. A little over a year. Yet you're there for a specific purpose. You are there at DePaul University to earn a Master's of Art in Public Services Management. How will you use your master's in public services management once you're done, once you get it? How, what will that look like in the real world, if you can explain that for us? Uh, well, public service management is pretty much preparing you to be in a management role in higher education settings. So that kind of explains uh, what I could do with it in my current career. It also prepares you to be in management roles in administrative offices or nonprofit organizations. And as far as where my interests are, as far as helping people and making a difference, I really could end up in any of those areas. So, um, so that's basically what the degree entails. Okay, good. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to actually get to know you better. And if you can stand there for one moment for me, Ruben, can you do me a favor? And that blue, beautiful packet right there on the table. Everyone, because Rachel stepped out of her comfort zone and participated in today's conference as a target speaker, District 30 would like to present her with this gift for being a target speaker. Now, as you can see, it's wrapped, and I'm touching it to see if maybe I can figure out what it is. <laughs> and I really can't. However, I would like to present this to Rachel and tell her, again, great job on being the target speaker for today. Let us know what you got as a gift, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. All right, we've taken the moment to get to know our target speaker, and I'm looking around the room to see if I'm getting any signals, and it looks as if our contestants have not yet made it back to the room. They should be coming in quite in a few moments. Yet I, I want to bring up Elsa Marquez because at this time Elsa can give us some information about the banner parade, correct, Elsa? And she has on her hand. Let's go. Thank you very much, Cassandra. And thank you everyone for coming to the banner parade this morning. I know that a lot of us lost sleep over it, <laughs> including what's underneath my helmet, but I would like to announce the winner for the Banner Parade today. We tried something different. We had a very distinguished panel of judges, and to be honest with you, I wasn't sure how that was going to work with all the clubs, but 
But amazingly, it worked. And I would like to present the winner of today's banner parade. The number starts with a two. And the initials start with a C. L. Crystal Lake Toast. Congratulations to Crystal Lake Toast Masters for winning the Banner Parade. All right. We're on. We're ready. They're ready. All right. I got the signal, everyone. I hear notes being passed around or paper being jingled. So here's what we're about to do at this point. We are ready to hear from our evaluation contestants. There will be one minute of silence after the first contestant and between each contestant. Tyler, if you can do us a favor, please make certain that they get the signal of a green light when one minute is up for me. And it makes certain that I get that signal of one minute being up. And after all the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their battles. So our timekeepers, again, when I advise you to do so, just make certain that I get the signal with a green light that one minute is up. And after the contest or the contest is over, the judges will get all the time that they need. At this time, I would like to bring up our first contestant. Contestant number one. Dave Roberson, contestant number one, contestant number one, Dave Roberson. Madam Toastmaster, distinguished dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters, welcome and cherished guests, and most specifically and importantly you, Richard Clark. Are you ready? And I have to ask that question because we're going to bypass our run-of-the-mill evaluation today and instead focus on a full-blown coaching session. Now you can receive these superior speaking tips from any one of the heads, right? World champion Ed Hearn, world champion Ed Tate, or even the world famous Mr. Ed. <laughs> now you laugh, but he's one of the most famous speakers in modern history, in the class by himself, so I'm saying. But these guys are charge you thousands of dollars for the same tips that you're going to get today. And today, because I like you, the only thing you have to pay is attention. So in three minutes, 29 and a half seconds, we are going to arm you with the technology to go from good to great by focusing on three things. Yourself, your audience, and your work. So I'm focusing on yourself, what I like to tell people is to make sure that your audience is entertained, make sure that you entertain yourself. And what that means is when you leave the stage, you should feel like you thoroughly enjoyed your time up there. I'm having a ball right now. <laughs> but with that, you want to focus on some things that really make you you. And you did a great job of that today. As far as humor goes, stopping to actually check your phone while we had to wait to see what was going on. Great job with that. You taught us some things in terms of the facts that you found through research as far as, far as Google searches, things like that. So you want to continue to do that. That's working for you. One thing that I like to do is actually pick three things that really make me me. And in every speech, I want to exhibit at least two of those things. And then the third, you might pick from off of that list just to kind of mix it up. But that way, your audience leaves feeling like they know a little more about who you are. Second thing we want to do is focus on your audience. And I thought you did a great job. You did survey the room in terms of, you know, your eye contact. Uh, you brought in some gestures, which was great as well. So what I want to do is two things every time. You want to make three friends before you even start speaking. What that means is I pick one person, like Joan. When I look at Joan, everybody in that area feels like they're getting some love. 
And if I can pick three people in the room, I can cover everybody. So that works really well. Second thing is you want to use names, right, Rachel? That way when I do that, Deepmar over here has to pay attention. He can't be text messaging on his new iPhone, right? <laughs> so make sure that everybody is engaged in what you're doing, which is a great thing that you want to do. So you're bringing people in, kind of bridging that gap. The third thing you want to do is focus on your world. And what that means is bringing people into your world. And you did a good job of that telling us how you find out about information from your uh, people in your life over the internet, things like that. So you want to bring us in, and that way we get a piece of what you're going through, and you bring your actual feelings, your experiences to life. So in summation, we want to focus on three things yourself, making sure that people know more about you, your audience, picking three friends and playing with them during your speech, and then the third thing, your world, making sure you bring people into your world. So strongly, um, you did a great job. Looking forward to seeing you speak at the next uh, conference. Maybe in an international speech contest. Man, I tell you guys. Timers, may we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots? Evaluation contestant number two, evaluation contestant number two, Tim Wilson. Next time, think about using a story. 
And my favorite thing to talk about are always hands. Because quite often speakers don't know what to do with them. They're kind of here, they kind of flap around a lot, and they just get in the way. So we try to put them out of the way. Like, you know, you tighten your hair, you keep it back, you got to put our hands back here or back here. You had your hands here. And the thing about that is it cuts you off from the audience. You also kept your hands are very close to you, which also cuts yourself in the audience. Think about keeping your hands down at your sides, and we just your just open. And then finally, the word you. You mention we every now and then. But what half the world is the word you. You pulls us in. Use the you to engage your audience more, excite people more, and get more involved in the story. Well, Rachel, one of the things that you're you definitely have convinced me that this is a danger, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Dan Dane, evaluation contestant number three. Evaluation contestant number three, Dan Dane. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, guests that we're very honored to have here. Rachel, I want to congratulate you on not only coming up in front of this large audience and giving a speech, but also having the courage to be evaluated six times. So that takes a lot of courage. <laughs> you gave a very passionate speech and was extremely effective in the way that you involved the audience in many ways. First thing that you did was you asked questions. So everybody here in the audience at, waited on them, responded a little bit, very effective. When you would involve the audience, you were very effective and positive. You would allow them for a few moments to think about well, what was their response and how they should do that. The second thing that you did was you picked a subject that we can all relate to in some manner, and it just was very effective. The third thing that you did, maybe not totally aware of it, but you used humor. It was also very effective in, in your humor that you used, that again, it was a way of involving the audience of things that we could relate to. So it was very effective in the way that you used those different techniques and making a very effective and powerful speech. Throughout, you used a lot of hand gestures. You had some visual aids. One of the visual aids is you. You have a very infectious smile, the way that you came up here and smiled, and just a natural rapport with the audience that you had. You used hand gestures, a few of them. Sometimes you would use down and up just a little bit too much a few times that you had there. One thing that you may incorporate in your hand gestures, which I just demonstrated, as as you're giving those, first point, second point, so just small little minor things in there but just your body language. The other thing is you picked out your phone and demonstrated to us how we can use those phones maybe to a detriment. So you're very effective in the use of visual aids. You had a great pace, you varied your speech, you also used pauses. 
The one thing that you may want to work on just a little bit is that you seem to pace a little bit. You would go over here, which walking around, using the audience, involving all of them is very important, but stop a little bit. That's uh, the one thing that you may want to do a little bit is just stop in there. But you gave a great speech that involved everybody, used humor, it was very effective, and I think one of the most powerful things is, it was a good reminder to us, don't let the technology run us, how important it is to let our family know about some of these things, that we can get caught up in the use of technology, use technology to our advantage. Very effective, enjoy your speech. Thank you. May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Evaluation contestant number four. Evaluation contestant number four, Tony Lawler. You did several examples where you were able to 
um, again, connect with us and keep us focused and on point. One of the things that I would say that we could probably change is like pacing a lot. A lot of times in Toastmasters, that's what we do, pace a lot. We need to make sure that, I use that as an example, just make sure that when we go to the left, we speak to the left. When we go to the right, we speak to the right. And I absolutely love your conclusion. You said, what will Albert Einstein do if he was here? Well, one of the things he probably would do is grab his cell phone and be like, can you hear me now? <laughs> Good. All right. So, as I said, your speech was very lovely and wonderful, and I thank you very much. Madam Toastmaster. May we have one minute of silence while the judges work their battles. Evaluation contestant number five. Evaluation contestant number five, Sarah Schiffer.
To be compelling, we not only need to connect, we need to be clear. Introduce your topic, introduce what you want us to do at the beginning, tell us how we're going to get there, and then help us do it by leaving us with a compelling question at the end. If you do that, next year, big bucks. <laughs>
And most importantly, Rachel, a good story makes you need to, want to, have to tell a friend. And if you, you pace quite often in your speech, if you had stopped and made a declarative statement and made us all think about what this thing called technology, how does it affect us? It would have changed us. So, good speech, I enjoyed the power that you brought here today. And if you take the things that I'm suggesting, what you brought here today, with the things that I'm suggesting, you would have a truly memorable speech. I would have no other choice but to tell all my friends. Madam Toastmaster. Everyone, please remain silent while the judges complete their ballots. Everyone, please remain silent as the judges mark their ballots. We appreciate your silence as the judges are marking their ballots. Thank you very much.
we have at this time an opportunity to get to know our contestants. So I would like to ask for all six of our contestants to join me on the stage if you can line up in the order in which you spoke. This will give me an opportunity to interview each of you and I will give you guys a handheld mic so that way you can be heard and I can be heard simultaneously. Thank you. Everyone, let's give our contestants a round of applause. And contestants, take a huge deep breath. It's now over. It's over. And Dave Roberson, you're the first person I get an opportunity to interview. Dave, tell us how long you've been in Toastmasters in the club that you're representing. Yes, well, I'm representing Christ Universal Temple Club 3, 665, and I've been in Tulsa since February 28, 2009. Oh, right. Well, right. Congratulations. Dave, I was taking a look at your bio, and I see that you provided us with a lot of great information. However, I became curious about something that you wrote down. I see that your occupation is Assistant Manager at Bank of America, is it? Tell us what your 10 year career aspirations are. I see assistant manager now, but I know there is something else looming out there in the future that you're obtaining. Career. Yes, well, there are a number of routes to go but from assistant manager, banking center manager, but to get beyond that, I just want to have the maximum reach that I can and be in a position where I can teach and move people to uh, do great things. So. All right, great, great. Well, Dave, I want to thank you and our speech contest certificate of participation I wanted to make sure that I got all of that in there as a frame or a talk to us I should say yet the most important part of this certificate I think for you will be when you take a look at this again it will say Dave Roberson for the 2011 district 30 evaluation speech contest thank you again for your participation thank you Tim Wilson, it seems like we've had this date before. Yeah, you seem familiar. Yeah, I know it's the hairstyle this time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tim, tell me, how long have you been in Toastmasters and which club you're representing? I've been in Toastmasters since the beginning. <laughs> and I'm representing Extreme Toastmasters. <laughs> Shout out to the people over there. Now, Tim, one of the reasons why I say that I know that we've had this date before is because I was the Toastmaster when you became the champion for the District 30 Table Topics Contest just last season. Last season. So congratulations on that. Yeah, something else I see on your bio here is that you are a speaking coach. Yes, I'm a speaking coach. I get people to pay me to coach them to speak. <laughs> Since you've had people pay you, tell me what's one of the greatest successes you've had in that role as a speaking coach. One of the greatest successes I've had so far is Jack Chalady of CTA Toastmaster. Now, Jack is a good speaker, very enthusiastic, did a great job. I helped him through a few things like using the U and following the audience. And he got a standing ovation. And Jack, are you here now? Can you just stand up if you're here? Jack? There he is. All right, Jack. Tim for his participation in this year's evaluation contest. <laughs> Dan and Dane, welcome. Dan, tell us how long have you been in Toastmasters and which club you're representing? I've been in Toastmasters about five years and I'm with uh, 4704. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, I love that. Dan, your bio is also interesting to me particularly your interests, and here's why. I see running, deer hunting, racquetball, and money. And I wanted to know, are you being chased by the deer? Are you hunting the deer? Are they playing racquetball with you? Do you pay? Do you want to play racquetball? Give us a little bit of 
explanation about which of those interests really are the ones that you truly enjoy. Now, I know you enjoy them all, otherwise you wouldn't put them down yet. Tell us which one you enjoy the most. Uh, the event that I enjoy the most is deer hunting, which is only about four days away. Uh, but who's counting? For me, deer hunting is a great experience of going out. A lot of it, having come back from Vietnam, one of my concerns was not getting shot here in the United States. <laughs> I was very fortunate that I found somebody that had private property, even though it's all the way down at the southern end of Illinois. We hunt five miles north of Paducah. But it's worth a seven hour drive because the group of hunters are very safe. For me, for the last 15 years, the best thing about deer hunting, well, there's several things about deer hunting. I'll try not to blather too long, you know. But it's been the experience because of the seven hour drive, has been able to ride with my son. Now, deer hunting is really a nice word, a little more macho than saying male body. So that's kind of what I do. It's a great time to sit out in the woods, hear the leaves fall, and just enjoy no phone. No computer and no TV. So no information overload for you. Good. No. Dan, thank you for your participation in the 2011 District Journal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tony Lawler, how long have you been in Toastmasters and which club are you representing? I am representing, successfully speaking, 9584. <laughs> I've been in Toastmasters for a little over three and a half years. Okay, good. A little over three and a half years. I was taking a look at your bio, and if there's nothing else that jumped out at me, was the fact that you enjoy working with youth. You truly enjoy working with youth. Your bio speaks of that. And I want to find out from you, what became your motivation for working with youth? Was it because you had a coach, a mentor, or a source of inspiration that motivated you to do so? Yeah, explain to us if you can. What motivated you to actually work with youth? Well, similar to how Toastmasters is ran, that we are, all of us are here doing what we are passionate about doing, what we like to do. There's many people who are here that gives back and that coaches and help out. I'm a former foster kid and I grew up as a struggling youth and I became a successful adult. And so I partnered with some other former foster kids, started an organization to help foster kids to be, that are struggling and help them to become a successful adult. And we named our organization. It's my way of giving back. Well, it's an excellent way of giving back. Not only are you a product of what you have lived, you, like you said, you were a foster kid as well, and you've been able to now give those that are in the situation you've been in before a source of inspiration so that they too one day can provide someone with the bio and youth will jump out at those individuals as well. Tony, thank I you. I was just going to say that I'm with a group um, this weekend right now. We're working on the Sarah, uh, representative Sarah Feigenholz. Uh, we're over in uh, Oakbrook right now and I stepped away to do this um, event but this weekend I'll be doing a speaking workshop for the youth so they love that particular part I love um, doing those workshops for them. Uh oh. Make certain they evaluate you. Give them an opportunity to evaluate you and show them this certificate. Let them know that you were participating in the 2011 District 30 Evaluation Speech Contest. Thanks. Sarah Shepard. Sarah, how long have you been in Toastmasters? What club were you representing? This is my third year anniversary this month. Yes. And I went, I went both platinum Toastmasters who I started with and representing here today at the new club, Spiritually Speaking. Woo! And speaking of Spiritually Speaking, you know, you had a real interesting comment in your notable accomplishment section on your bio, Sarah. Here's what Sarah said in one. Sarah says her notable accomplishments are that she's never been incarcerated. <laughs> she works from home and actually works. She's a CPA or, and a certified coach and she loves her life. Now all of those things were very interesting to me, yet the one thing that I want her to share with all of us is that if she could provide any of us with one piece of advice, what would you say to us for us to learn to love our lives the way in which you learn to love your life? That's a 
Great question. I think what I love most about my life is my spirituality. And so meditation, because I feel like when you center yourself, you find that rock inside, or silent prayer, you find that rock inside that's untouched by the ups and downs of life, and then you can learn from whatever is going on around you. Not bad. Piece of advice, meditation. We have workshops coming up this afternoon, everyone, so remember you have a speaker before you don't start meditating at that time. Yeah, we'll use meditation afterwards. And we want to thank you, Sarah, for your participation today. As a Barry B. Mixon, how long have you been in Toastmasters and what club were you representing? Two years, 10 months, 12 days. <laughs> and I have the pleasure and honor of driving 120 miles twice a month to the Toast of Agonquin. 125, 1013. Oh, right. You know, I, I, I looked at my watch there because I thought you were about to tell us the minutes and the seconds too. <laughs> Barry, your bio here has something that's very interesting, and it sounded as if you started to touch on that in your evaluation, but I was curious about this storytelling services. You said you are the Jim Hunter, gemological and storytelling services, art, science, history, magic. What exactly, how does storytelling fit into gemology? My professional training is in gemology. I was trained in Gemological Institute of America, the Gemological Association of Great Britain and Northwestern University. And when you understand gemstones, I'm often asked to appraise a gemstone. And if you see two diamonds, as civilians, you see diamonds and say, oh, they're diamonds. But I have to look at all the different values of what that diamond, and once you understand the story of that diamond, the table percentage, the color, the cut, the clarity, where does it come from, the provenance, then you can understand the value. The same thing with people. There's lots of black women or white men or white women out there, but if you're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with some, someone in an interview or job process, process, you have to discover the value of yourself. You have to be able to explain your story in three to seven minutes in order to distinguish yourself with the next person. Other than that, you just, I am a chemist. Hi, I work in a lab. Hi, I work in an office. So what? <laughs> Barry, you said quite a bit there, and you definitely talked about the values, which is similar to what goes on in gemology. And I know that you gave a valuable evaluation to Rachel today, and a lot of what you said she will take back with you. Yet what I would like for us to do at this time is to thank you for taking the time to share valuable information with not only Rachel, but with all of us today as an evaluation contestant. Rachel, I have a certificate of appreciation for you. And this certificate is presented to you for your support in the 2011 District 30 Evaluation Speech Contest. You get more gifts, more gifts. Come on up and receive your certificate. looking to see if I need to fill some time. I need to fill some time of giving the head nod. Okay, I'm good at that. All right, great. Is John Moore in the room? Cassandra knows who to go to. Do you like these wonderful little programs? Chair Marlene Berger. We actually had something similar at the International Convention and she wanted to try this. It's a little different than what we've done before, but she wanted to try it. So if you like it, give me a round of applause so we can do it. If you notice on the back of your program, it's got save the date. One thing in particular I would like to point out to you is the spring conference. 
I know we're still experiencing the fall conference, but our spring conference is coming up. And it's an important conference. It's on April the 20th and 21st. It's in this same area at the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel and Conference Center at 5440 North River Road in Rosemont. And our conference chair is in the back of the room. If you could raise your hand, Marilyn Smith is going to be our spring conference chair. extremely hard because she will be rolling out the red carpet for the president of Toastmasters International, Michael Matoro. He will be visiting us in April and I know all of you want to be here to hear him speak. At this time, our evaluation contest is concluded. Please stick around for the business meeting to resume shortly. Melissa, would you like to say anything? Melissa would like to say something. <coughs> Thanks, Joan. And actually, Joan is ensuring that we stay on track here. And I wanted to thank Joan for coming up to provide the announcements. And what I would like to do as the Toastmasters to bring up our contest chair, Melissa, for the announcements that she has. Everyone, please help us welcome to the stage our contest chair. Thank you. 